So, what inspired you to become an artist? Yeah, I think being an artist is something that you're all born with. I mean, most of the people that I talk to that are artists and creative, they kind of say, I've been doing it since I can remember, or, you know, I was four years old and someone put a piece of paper in front of me and a pencil and I started drawing. And I personally, I started drawing dinosaurs when I was like 10 years old. And if I couldn't remember the names of them, I used to just make them up and like give them wings and stuff. And I was drawing dragons. The funny thing is, I was a terrible artist. I'm not very good at drawing. But I had ideas just filling up my head. You know, I was writing plays and scripts and drawing characters. And I realized at some point in my life, I was a creative person. And I think that the creative desire, that kind of burning need to do something and make something and instill yourself into something else, I think that's what defines us. And I think the creative types are the ones that's like, that's not enough. It's not enough. I need more than that. I need to throw my ideas and my passions and my, my visions out there so that other people can see them. Well, what kind of uh, projects are your favorite to work on? I actually right now, I, I love making games. I think I've always loved the games. From the moment I started playing Pac-Man, when there were video games to play, I have had them on my mind. Um, I play them less now because I make them, but I think about making art for a game is that it, it lives and breathes. Once again, it's this creative thing. I've created this thing, and you can maneuver it and play around and make the guy run down the, the basketball court and dribble a basketball or talk, but I'm the one that gave him life. I breathe life like Prometheus into this character by building him and putting in different pieces of rigging and stuff like that. So. Uh, as for your own projects, which are the ones that you're most proud of? I'm really proud of my first game project of all of the, my entire career was when I got a job at Sony PlayStation working on Game Day. And Game Day was it's a football game. I'm more into fantasy stuff, but for the first time in my life I had a professional job doing 3D stuff. And it was just it was just an amazing atmosphere to work in. And this is back in the PlayStation One days when you know, we had such a low poly count, and we had like 15 guys on the team, and you know, we were in San Diego, and you wore shorts and sandals to work every day, and you're just working with all these cool guys that know so much about what you want to do. It was like, really, was really inspired by the fact that here I am getting paid, you know, a decent salary to make games. It was just the coolest thing in the world for me. It was like my dream come true. And I'm very proud of the work I did back then, just learning how to become part of the production team. I'd say the other project that I was most proud of working on, or at least the project that I enjoyed working on the most, were the NBA games because they were so high end. The NBA 2 came, it was like the pinnacle of character development and character rigging, and it was extremely demanding. I mean, we really worked hard to get all these pieces right. I mean, I set up all the face animation, you know, I stayed in my office 12 hour days sometimes getting all the parts right for the body and the shoulders and the ribs to move. I mean, this is a year-long process where we had to constantly update it and improve it. But I mean, in that year, it was crammed with tons of hours of working on making this thing look like the best basketball game in the world, which it, you know, it was. What sort of uh, career goals do you have for the future? Well, I've been in the production industry for a long time been in the game development industry as a long time. As an employee, as someone who I, I went to a company and I worked for them, I sat in my office and I did rigs and I did face animation and I've done models, I've done texture mapping. There's a lot of things I've done along. I've had, you know, plenty of early career stuff and even middle career. Now I'm in my later career and what is really my goal, what I'm really doing now is I'm creating my own games. I'm creating my own projects. I'm getting other people to do those jobs of modeling and rigging and animating, although I'm doing them myself, but I'm now in the position to be the idea person. I create an idea for you and say, this is how it's going to work. And then I go and work on some of it myself, and I'm working on a couple of games that I'm doing all by myself, but I'm also able to now say, because I have students and things, they have specific uh, skills, sometimes way better than mine, you know, some of them way better models than I'll ever be way better texture artist. Now I can say, hey, you know what? I need these four models. Um, here's my project. You know, what do you think? I can pay you X amount for a contract. So I'm in the position now in ideas and management, you know, the, the upper level of creative ideas where I can then go down to other people and say, hey, let's all put this together so I can have this vision 
um, which is great because it suddenly kind of breathed life into my creative career again. And what um, ideas of yours are you particularly excited about? Um, the game I'm working on now, I'm actually the most excited about the, it's, it's a whole series of games based on fish. And I started out this whole idea where we're going to do this fish eat fish game, kind of like a mix between Spore and Angry Birds. And it has kind of an Angry Birds cartoonist style, but it's all in 3D. Uh, the big game that I hope to finish eventually will be location based, so it's all on mobile and it's going to be based on your GPS position. Still working out details on that. And when I started it out, it seemed like a pretty simple game until I really got into game development, you know, on an individual level and coding and stuff and realized I don't know how to write into AI and some of this stuff seems just really, really tough, like peer-to-peer -to -peer networking and all these things that I would have to include. I realized this project was way out of scope. So I said, okay, I'm narrowing it and narrowing it and narrowing it, but I'm keeping the same visual style, I'm keeping the characters, um, I'm keeping the models, I'm just making mini games out of this whole concept until I can get enough skill and acquire enough people to build the big game. In 200 years, how would you like to be remembered? Um, 200 years. You know, I, I think, honestly, I would like to be remembered as someone who can mix ideas and reality and art. And few people that can create this big visionary idea, you know, whatever that is, and keep it consistent. I mean, I always think of like Da Vinci and Michelangelo and some of like the Renaissance artists who I always thought were incredibly inspiring because they were able to take ideas of art and function and form and put them into this concept of humanities. I mean, that's kind of like this extremely grandiose Renaissance vision in 200 years. They remind me of, they'll think of me as this Renaissance person who wanted to create all this stuff. And, you know, if you look at Da Vinci's sketches, he had thousands of ideas every day for flying machines and submarines and stuff. He never got a chance to put them into production because he didn't have technology. And that doesn't mean I'm going to put anything fantastic into production, but the idea that someone sees me as this kind of technological renaissance person who has all these ideas, not all of them got to, you know, be finished, but if it was inspirational to other people, if I could work on a project that may not get finished or that may get finished and not be what I wanted it to be, and someone else looks at it and says, well, you know, we could do something like this, or we're inspired by this. So I'd really like to be remembered as someone who had his hand in a lot of ideas and wanted to throw them out there, not because he wanted to be wealthy or because he wanted to be famous or what, because he wanted to, you know, do a lot of stuff, but because he wanted to inspire himself and other people.